I love brother James. James did some, ah, when I get to heaven, I'll give him a good handshake. And if there's coffee there, me and him will share a cup of coffee. He did some justice in defending the character of God. Hey, James. James was frontal with the defense of God's character. First of all, he says, he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Kabayada. In the original is, let him ask the giving God. Let him ask the giving God. What James is saying is, God never holds back. Let him ask the giving God. That is, God is always itching to give. So, God is constantly giving. Let him ask the giving God, which give it to all men, not to Christians. You wonder why your mother in the village who is not born again prays and the prayers are answered. He's the giving God. You wonder why your colleague in the office that he does not even believe in God when he just says, oh God, please help me. Things happen. He's the giving God. He gave it to all men liberally and upbraided not. The word upbraid means he does not find fault. When God gives, he gives without conditions. He does not say, are you qualified? Are you not qualified? Did you fast? Did you you not fast are you holy are you not holy he just gives he gives he gives and gives give it to all men liberally he give it to all men generously and does not find fault that's my father that's my god he does not find fault then after he finished settling that side of God's character, he now said, let no man say in the same chapter. The whole chapter of James 1 is James' defense for God's single identity. He does not find fault. Let no man say when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot. God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man so it was not god that tempted jesus that already corrects matthew chapter 4 for you the spirit of god did not lead jesus to be tempted because god does not set people up for temptation you see the man that sets up and the man that tempts are the same so to say god set you up for temptation is more wicked than to say god tempted you that means God is a crook. Since he didn't want to be the one in front tempting, he now sat in the background and set you up. No, God does not set up. God does not set you up and God does not tempt you. He is not associated with temptation. Why? There is no evil in God. He has no hidden agenda. He is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And there is no shadow. He does not have shadow. So God is not hiding something. When you look at Christ, you see the totality of God. He is called the express image of God. God doesn't set up. He does not. Instead, he makes a way of escape. Glory to God. He makes a way of escape. He makes a way of escape. Glory. That's my father there. So, that is why the sovereignty of God cannot exist outside Christ. No, it cannot. It cannot. We are not Muslims. We are not Muslims. It is Muslims who believe that everything that happens is the making of God. You die is the making of God. You break your leg is the making of God. You are sick is the making of God. You are poor is the way God wants it. That's Islam. And we can understand why they talk like that. They are in darkness. No man comes to the light and attributes evil to God. God cannot be tempted. Neither tempted he any man. It was many years ago while I was watching and following the ministry of Dr. K.C. Price. He blessed me with a statement. He said, and, and, and some of you think God is responsible for sickness. Maybe you think God is teaching you a lesson by bringing sickness into your life. So this good God loves you so much. He gave your wife, your wife two pair of breasts and just took one by cancer. What a wonderful God. He gave two and took one. And he didn't even take it. He took it through an instrument called cancer. What a God. What a God. 
He is really a God. man. If he is God, if he didn't want to give, he shouldn't have given. Why give and change your mind? No shadow of turning. No shadow of turning. Forever, O oh God. Whatever God does is a settled reality. Settled. And I have news. I know what God has done. Everything God has done is in Christ. Where are you? That is why it is not heaven at last. It is heaven at first. Because whatever God does is settled forever. That's why people that are struggling with eternal salvation have not understood the character of God. How can a, a permanent God produce a temporal salvation? It's not in his character. He, everything produces after its own kind. So if God is eternal, whatever God provides must be eternal. So that's why salvation is eternal. Redemption is eternal. The forgiveness of sins is eternal. Uh, you know, your inheritance is eternal. Because he came out of an eternal God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. So James is defending God's character. Now read the next verse for me. But, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. 15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Can you even observe how little Satan is? That Satan is not even recognizing the process. That is how insignificantly myopic, pinchomic, microscopic he is. He is not even recognized in the process. Is man, desire, man, uncontrollable desire, desire, sin, sin, dead. No Satan. Satan just hides. And takes advantage of the motion and follows it to its terminal destination since it is working in his interest. It's man lost, uncontrollable, lost, sin, sin, death. Even Romans 5:12 establishes that. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Can you see the, the motion of it? That reveals to you that God is not in control. 